Hello everyone, and welcome to a special episode with To Die For Games. I'm Mandy, aka the Board Gaming Pinup Girl. Yesterday for International Tabletop Day, Star Lords and I had the opportunity to go to Rigaud, Quebec, to the Z-Man headquarters. <gasps> what we saw was fantastic. There were so many games that were not released that we got to play. I know you're all thinking of a few because they're on my Instagram and my Facebook and people are just talking about them in general. So let's talk about a few things here. I'm going to try and put some timestamps below in the comment section so you can kind of skip ahead to certain games if you want to know a little bit more. This is going to be very short, so you may want to listen to the whole video. If not, you've got the timestamps. And again, feel free to subscribe to our channel if you see what you like. If not, leave us some feedback below so, you know, we're always about improving and getting better for you guys. So enough chat, let's get to talking about the games. So the first game we played was Aquarium. Not gonna lie, we all kind of looked at the game and went, oh, that's cute. Looked kind of kitty a little bit. I mean, the artwork was very nice. We just, I don't know, it just didn't grab us at first. So the table was empty, so we thought, hey, why not? Let's sit down and check it out. Sat down, got an explanation from actually the artist of the game. So it was great that he was there and we started playing. Oh my gosh, I love this game. The art alone is beautiful, really pretty. You can see from my iPhone pictures, they're not the greatest, but at least we get an idea of what we were playing with. The objective of the game was obviously to gain the most victory points and to do that by collecting cards with plants. You can create sets to give you points or you can collect different types of fish, which also give you set, uh, have sets, which will give you points. So I mean, having all of those are gonna benefit you. And the currency were bubbles. That is so cute. So currency was great. Uh, you could actually have fish that were in your tank that could generate bubbles or money for you every round. They even had a fish that was like looks like a little bank. Its head looked like a bank that would generate coins for you or bubbles every round. So in the end, shockingly I won. That never happens because I was able to get some plant combos and some fish combos and little starfish at the top of the cards are your victory points. So all those were counted. Uh, to feed your fish, we had three feeding rounds uh, in the game. So the third one would trigger the end round. But every time we had a feeding round, we had to determine how much we were going to feed. So if it was gonna be one times, two times, or three times, depending on the card that was pulled. Uh, feeding your fish was great if you had plants because it could actually cover off some of the fish. If you had more plants, then you could feed more fish and you didn't have to worry about it. There were some of us <laughs> that didn't have that, so yeah, they were stuck paying a lot of bubbles to feed their fish, which left you for nothing when you were trying to get fish or plants in the kind of drafting round. So let's talk about that a little bit. On the main table, there, were card there was a pile of cards and then there was a nice kind of board where you would place all the cards that were coming up to buy. So each player would take a turn for a buy. So let's say it was my turn. We'd flip the card, see what came up. And I was like, oh, that fish looks really good for me. And you decide if you're going to buy it or pass. If you decide to buy it, every player has the same cards. So you have a set that's labeled one. You have a set that's labeled two at the top. And you have one card that's one and two. So you could use it for both rounds. The first one is going to affect the fish you get. It could be switched out. You can have another one added. And you still are responsible for buying these. So your other players that you're playing with can really determine what you're gonna buy. Once that's been done, then you move over to the second part, which determines how much you're gonna buy it for. So that fish that says, you know, it's worth one, you yeah, know, it may be multiplied or added on by the other players, or you might get a discount and they get some bubbles. So it's a lot to kind of take in because we don't have it physically in front of us, but hopefully the pictures give you an idea. So for me, this was a hit. I wanted to buy it right then and there, and they said, Nope, uh, it's not available yet. So they said in a few months, I'm crossing my fingers, it's at the top of my list. So Aquarium, a hit. Aquarium was actually the first game that we had a chance to play at Z-Man, and it was tied for me at least for the most surprising game of the day. When we first sat down at the table, you, I was struck by the simple, sort of cutesy or childlike art. It's thoughtful, it's it's smart, but it made the game look like it's gonna be a kid's game. And that art was actually hiding a much deeper, more thoughtful, more nuanced game than I suspected upon first glance. In this game, you attempt to create the nicest aquarium by acquiring fish and plants, uh, and you do this in sort of an auction style, and the other players can play cards, 
towards you or against you to make it easier or harder to buy things, and there are advantages that they gain from doing some of those actions. Um, it comes down to a little bit of luck, but there's also some sort of psychology involved as well. Like, you, ha you can't just play the cards in front of you, you also have to play the other players. And what you know of them and what you think they're going to do, it's really interesting, really fun. Uh, and frankly, if they had a copy available to purchase, I would have walked out with one. It's that good. So, yeah, look for that one coming soon. So another game that I know people were very excited about that we played was Dead of Winter, A Long Night. Ugh, I have the original, I love it. So I thought, oh, another standalone, I'm not really gonna need it. No, you need this game, especially if you play the original a lot. Um, there are lots of differences. I noticed that even the place cards in this game are thicker. Um, they've also added additional places. Uh, one specifically is called Raxon. That's a barrel of fun there. And you can actually get a character. So remember Sparky, everyone? Now we have the Lab Monkey, and this is where you grab this character. It's very cool. We also have structures we can build to help with frostbite. You know that pesky frostbite sticks around every round until you get rid of it? Well, now you can build, I think it's the fireplace, which allows you to remove frostbite from your players. You just don't get it. So that to me was awesome. Um, a lot of really cool characters with some really neat uh, things that they can do. It's amazing, so that's really helpful. Uh, some new items in a lot of the decks, like uh, gasoline. You can like blow up zombies. How cool is that? But now in turn, you have harder things, like you have like special zombies, which are harder to kill. You have other kind of, they're kind of uh, monster zombie that actually go, not in the hazard spots, they actually go in the spots of um, of where the survivors are. So it takes up a survivor spot. It's crazy. So by playing it, I thought, oh my gosh, yeah, we might actually have a chance at winning because we have more stuff. You know, we came really close as usual. Round one, I think we're at round one, morale one, and dead. <laughs> but we still had a blast. So I have a little video that you'll see. I'll run through our pictures of this game so you can get an idea what the board looks like. Um, they did change the cover because apparently it was quite similar to the old one, so you'll notice that is a bit different. That is the final cover. I know this game's probably gonna be available August, September. I know in Canada, stores um, like Quickie Games and 401 Games are taking pre-orders um, right now for September. So if you want it, you gotta grab that one. Um, they also mentioned, I thought this was kind of cool, that you could actually take this game and combine it with the base game. So if you wanted to specialize your game, maybe tailor it to a certain way, make it a bit more hard, more difficult, excuse me, or, you know, you just wanted to add a few of the characters to the other game or vice versa, or blend them, you are able to do that. So I thought that was really, really neat. Uh, so overall, loved it. I thought the additions were great. It definitely uh, increased difficulty, but it wasn't impossible. Well, then again, the base game was a little impossible, but still really good. FYI, I was the betrayer in this one, and I was so close. But it was really hard. I had to get four characters and equip all four of them. I was so close, but I think they were on to me near the end, so... <laughs> Job well done, I thought, on my part, because we lost. <laughs> so definitely another win for me. Can't wait for this, uh, uh, this game to come out by Plathead Games. Dead of Winter, The Long Night is one of the most anticipated games that we had a chance to play. This is the standalone sequel to the original Dead of Winter. The game plays very much the same, but there are three major expansions that are included in with this game. One of which is the ability to build improvements to your colony, which is kind of cool. The My favorite of the three, though, was the experimental lab facility location. The reason this was so neat is because not only were all the things that you could search, like the search pile, had really overpowered, fun new items in it, but more importantly, this location spawns super zombies, or specialized zombies that have unique abilities and, and conditions that surround them. It just really made it more interesting and added, yet again, more replayability. Now, this new game also came with a whole host of new survivors, including a monkey, and we got to play him, and it was awesome. So, if you already own the original and you like it, this might be worth picking up to increase replayability, giving you new locations, new cards, new survivors. If you don't own either of them and are thinking about getting one, I'd recommend getting this one over the original. It's really solid uh, and a lot of fun.